think we are ready to start. I would like to welcome Sim Kala to our stage. Uh, Sim is going to share about how everything will shift from digital assets and the metaverse. Metaverse has been such a hot topic um, of, of the past uh, few months um, with uh, the Facebook uh, shifting their main focus to, to metaverse and uh, the emerge of VR and uh, artificial intelligence. And uh, uh, Sim, uh, about Sim a little bit, uh, Sim is a, um, a very um, um, uh, interesting um, um, community speaker and uh, he's based here in Bali and uh, he has uh, over 10 years of experience in operations and uh, management consulting and uh, as well as he's very passionate about helping individuals and corporation to develop their crypto investment strategies and uh, welcome Sim and uh, the stage is yours. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Welcome guys. Uh, welcome to the metaverse first of all. I know a lot of people don't like to think about it like that, but you know, right now, even this, what we're doing, we're doing it in the metaverse, right? So it's not that that out there of a of a of an idea that we could do this in a virtual way, in a way where you could experience through all of your senses a world that isn't the physical world, because we're kind of already doing it. But before I dive into you know metaverse and digital assets and the transitions, I like to always start off from the bigger picture and zoom out and just look at what's actually going on on the bigger scale. So, you know, there's a there's a great book called The Fourth Turning that I recommend everybody to read. It's The Fourth Turning um, that does an analysis of the past 600 years of humanity and looks at the 100 year cycles that play out uh, in, in the seasons of humanity, let's call it. And what they found is that every 100 years, uh, there is usually a crisis that occurs that actually causes the transition of the world from an old paradigm to a new paradigm. You know, it happened with uh, with World War One and Two in the in the beginning of the uh, the twentieth century, and then it happened in 1820, and then it happened in 1720, and it's just it's it's the seasonality of humanity to go from an old way of doing things to a new way of doing things, right? So, the most recent one that 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 we can think about is is the world that uh, that we met and the world that we have now with the internet, right? So when you're thinking about the world before the internet, it was all human to human. It was people talking to people on phones. Um, it, was, it was basically based around the idea that only people were, were the end, end points and the people were part of every single workflow and decisions were all being made by people. And at that point, you know, we would value companies and we would value the idea of value in a way that, you know, if a company produced goods or services, we would value it according to how many goods and services it produced, right? So it was a simple way of looking at things. And then as soon as we saw that the internet came online, the internet changed the way that we, we first of all, value things, right? We, instead of valuing according to how many goods and services something produced, for example, um, you know, Google is the biggest internet company in the world, one of the biggest internet companies in the world, website companies, and they don't produce any websites. Facebook is the biggest social media company in the world, but they don't produce any social media. Uber is the biggest taxi company in the world, but they don't produce any, they don't own any taxis. Um, Airbnb is the biggest hotelier in the world, but they don't own any hotels. So what happened is we saw a shift of the world from physical goods and services based production-based value mechanisms to network-based value mechanisms. And that, that's following um, a law called Metcalf's law. So the reason why that transition happened right when it happened is because it was the prelude for us to go into a world that is a metaverse world. Like for example, the last time this happened was the, in, the, in the 1920s to 30s, where we actually, the idea of money changed completely, where we went from uh, a world where everything was based on gold to everything that was based on the US dollar, it was called the Bretton Woods system. That system has run for almost 100 years up until now where everything has been based on the US dollar. And now that system is starting to run out of steam. And we are now going to be building, we are effectively, we've been building for the last 20 years, the basis for the new system that's gonna come out. So, you know, looking at, how value has shifted now value is is, is it's, it's not how many goods and services 
Bitcoin produces that makes Bitcoin valuable. It's the fact that it does something for the world that is valuable on its own. And it has a network of users who are using it. And the num number of users that are using the network and the amount of value they gain out of it is the amount of value that comes out of it, right? Same thing for the internet. Like, you remember, for those of us that are old enough, um, I remember when the internet came out and everybody thought it was an A with a circle around it. Like people used to be like, is that what the internet is? It's the A with the circle thing. Like I can send email to each other. We could not have fathomed that internet would be where it is today. You know, that old world was people talking to people. All processes were people to people. The internet brought networks of computers and put them in between people that allowed us to be able to do things which first of all, look magical that literally allowed us to be able to see each other across the world, allowed us to be able to run businesses single-handedly. We can do with the tips of our thumbs. Uh, thank you so much. I, I do like to date myself. I am in, you know, they always say, do love yourself. Thank you, Mara. Um, the, the, the internet put networks in between us. So it basically, it, when you added computer networks in between humans, it allowed us to, first of all, increase our efficiency, increase our ability to be able to have an impact, increase our ability to be able to learn, and it's supercharged our ability to interact with the world. And now we can, you know, with the tips of our thumbs, we can run whole companies that used to take hundreds of thousands of dollars and used to, there we go, um, that, that used to take teams and teams of people to be able to, um, to be able to do. So, what actually shifted is that we automated a lot of the processes that humans used to do. We let computers do those, those computer networks, like, you know, Google allows us to do a lot of things that allows, allow us to interact, which would have taken teams to do. Zoom is allowing us to do that. Um, and that addition of the computer networks in between humans allowed humans to be much more efficient in the way that they do things, right? Now, what's happening with crypto and digital assets is that we are transitioning the entire system onto computer networks which run themselves you know when it comes to digital assets and crypto humans are just there to make sure the computers run i mean we build them and we program them but after that like for bitcoin we're simply the miners and then we're the users right but we don't actually run the system we don't control the system and actually the removal of humans from that process is the thing that makes it more efficient, more reliable, less corruptible, all these things. So then we went from, you know, now we've seen the world go from that old world of human to human, everything is human to human plus networks. And these networks were controlled by centralized authorities like companies. So they had profit motives and that kind of messed with the process. Now we're going to the next stage of the internet where it will be networks that are, that are designed and built in a way. So they're incorruptible in some capacity and they have equanimity and fairness built into the systems themselves. And that's what you know is going on with blockchain. That's what's going on with the digital assets that we're interacting with. But actually what's going on is we're building a completely new world. We're building a completely new universe. The metaverse is not just a room that you go into. It's a completely new, new universe, a completely new world built in a completely new space using completely new ways of interacting and, and, and working with each other. So the emergence of digital assets is, is, was the second last thing that we needed in order for that world to become functional. Because if we're building a completely new universe effectively, value exchange within that universe has to be created and old money could not function in that new world. So we created these digital assets and they naturally occurred at a time when the world is going through this transitionary phase. And this crisis moment that we're all going through right now and that we're probably gonna experience for the next six years um, is part of the process of the destruction of an old world and the building of a completely new world. A new world that will have a lot more equanimity, that will have a lot more automated processes that are much less corruptible, but it also unfortunately is going to be a world that is going to be much more controllable simply because it'll be run through systems which are controlled by the powers that be in some capacity. And that's that's the real metaverse that's coming out. That's why you know Facebook is is building it, Microsoft is building it, all these entities that were part of the, the introduction of the world to the internet are now introducing us into the next stage. And it's not a coincidence that we've been introduced to digital assets and the transition of money is happening to the digital world, but also 
the the transition of ownership is happening through nfts the transition of complete value models and and digital economies is happening through um like for example you know right now somebody can play a game and earn a living in this world by because they've they've transitioned their entire business into this new model now the last piece that's necessary for us to truly transition to this new world is digital id which is what's being what's playing out right now you know we're all in one way or another, accepting a form of digital ID, a QR code, let's say, um, that will allow us to be individually verifiable as ourselves in this new universe. And once, once all of these systems are in place, within the next four years, we are going to see the implementation of the metaverse. So you remember, remember when cell phones came out? Like the year 2000, people thought the internet was an A with a circle around it. By the year 2007, internet was de facto in the world, as a matter of fact. It, it became part of business processes, businesses, you know, things were being done on the internet in a massive way by 2007. Then the iPhone releases, and within seven years, that technology proliferates the entire world because it was riding on the proliferation of the internet. So the internet allowed iPhone and, and cell phones to proliferate at a much quicker pace. So within 14 years, every single person has internet in their hands and they're doing stuff that is effective, would have been called magic 20 to 25 years before that happens. The metaverse is going to have an imp have a, a, a implementation curve that's gonna be even faster than the internet. So expect that within the next four years, we are going to have, first of all, next year, Apple's gonna release their headset. Facebook is gonna release their AR VR headset the year after Amazon's releasing theirs and the the improvement on those technologies within five years is going to be similar to the kind of improvement that we had on cell phones now some of the things that people don't think about is the fact that there's also an internet of bodies being built where the bodies will be connected to the to this new metaverse there's an internet of senses being built where your senses will be connected to this new metaverse right now we just think oh these clunky glasses who's going to put these on just wait until they can connect your your smell your touch your hearing your taste your vision of course to this new world and if you think this is a little far-fetched please google that they have already come up with a way of being able to scan your brain and reconstruct your dreams and play them back to you. They've already confirmed that we're able to, to read your visual cortex and replay what you, are, what you are seeing. So to reverse that technology and be able to then effectively enter hallucinations into your brain is not that far away. And I know this sounds far-fetched now, but the same, you know, having a slate in my hand that answers all my questions and I can see everybody across the world sounded like magic until seven years later, it was in people's hands, right? So that same thing is going to play out. And so now let's think about, okay, so what is the metaverse? What is the metaverse? The metaverse is what we've already been building for a long period of time. We've been building ways of interacting and, and humans connecting with humans in, a, in Zoom for, for two years now. You know, we've been figuring out how to use apps and automation to run companies for almost a decade now. So we have been building out the framework for the metaverse. All we simply need now is for this to go here. And that's going to be the first step. And next year that that implementation is going, that is going to its full on implementation stage. Then the metaverse itself will start off kind of like a gaming universe. That's that's kind of the most digestible version of it that, that, that we can relate to right now. A place that we can go to, we can interact, um, we can you know attend events, we can attend concerts. I'll be doing my crypto meetings, which I do every Wednesday, partially in the metaverse as well, because I'm a nerd. So I'll be jumping head, headlong into, into that process. But the moment you move beyond that and you can connect my senses to that world, then effectively it becomes an alternate reality. It literally becomes an alternate, it's like a hallucination. You know, anybody who's, who's experienced psychedelics can understand that there is a different layer of reality that you can experience that feels as real as this reality in that space. So that same thing is coming to the world that we live in here. It's not a coincidence that 
money is being revolutionized. So the old banking paradigm is on the way out. As a matter of fact, there's a new banking system being built on, a, on the ISO 20022 banking messaging language that will go into implementation in November 2022 and will end, uh, will be fully implemented across the world in November of 2025, which is going to allow every single penny that moves around the world to be tracked. And if you think, you know, we can operate outside of that by operating in these decentralized spaces, there's a wall of regulation coming that's going to control crypto and bring it under the control of the powers that be in some capacity. There's going to be interoperability layers that they'll use to make sure that they can control the, the, the movement of value. So we will have to become compliant in that stage. But then once the value movement is actually controlled, then the experience of humans is the next thing to control. You know, they, they, there's, there's been, like, if you've heard about the great reset and uh, you will own nothing and you'll be happy, you will own nothing and you'll be happy because you will be existing in a reality where you won't need to own things. If I can control your senses and I can control your vision and I can control your entire experience of reality, I, you can have everything. The cost of a villa is zero in the internet. The cost of going to Paris is zero because you can experience it. I can make you hallucinate it. So, you know, I think we're, we're really, we're, we're in such a nascent stage of the metaverse that we're still thinking about it the way we thought about the internet in 1997. You know, we think about it like, oh, is the metaverse like the goggles you put on? And then that's like people saying, is the internet A with a circle around it? What the metaverse is, is a completely new universe that most humans will interact with it. So when you think about, you know, why do we need that? Simply because the, the world that we've been living in, we all want to get rich. We all want wealth. We all want cars. We all want jets. We all want houses. But that, that simply cannot exist. Eight billion of us cannot just completely take all the resources of the earth and all live in a, in a, in a prosperous stage. Even though the world that we live in today, more people are out, have been lifted out of poverty than ever before. It's at the lowest number that it's ever been. So we're living in the best time possible. But this level of growth simply cannot continue forward. So the only way that we could make sure that people are able to be happy and, and have human connection and connect with each other unfortunately is a, is a completely alternate reality where humans connect to each other through technology now the good side of that is that it is going to create a it as you're experiencing right now it's going to create an a completely new world of opportunity where you know gold is being reinvented it's bitcoin internet is being reinvented that's your ethereum solana you know polka dot um, money is being reinvented ownership is being reinvented Art is being reinvented. Supply chains are being reinvented. Every single thing around you is being reinvented, not for this world. You know, some of it is going to, it is definitely going to work in this world, but it's actually designed and built to be implemented in that new world that's being built. So, you know, that world will take over this world within four years they implemented the, the the actual about a billion people will be onboarded into that world and within by 2030 we will all be living in living and interacting in the metaverse you know if i tell you okay you know there there's the, there's lockdowns the world is the, the world out there there's a virus that will kill you so stay at home but if you stay at home and you connect to the system you can be a uh, the emperor of China in the 13th century and, and, you know, experience life in this completely new way, or you can fly to space and be a space ranger, or you can meet your friends on the, on, on Saturn, you can literally do absolutely anything that you would like to do. And it will feel, look, smell, taste everything the way that you, that you experience it to be. Plus you can get anything in there you want. You can do anything with it as you want. You can, it, at that point, why would I want to own a house? Why would I want to own a car? Why would I want to own any of these things? As a matter of fact, we are going to be living in a sharing economy. This world, the non-metaverse world, is completely shifting to sharing because the marginal cost of everything is going to zero. And marginal cost is once you've paid for the infrastructure, once you've set up the systems, the cost of doing things on top of that is zero. Like the cost of me running a company in Canada in the year 2000 was hundreds of thousands of dollars. I would have needed marketing teams and, you know, I would have, it would have been enormously complex and difficult and nearly impossible for me to be able to do from Canada. Whereas today, the cost of that is simply a laptop, a phone and some apps, which I can subscribe to. 
once I've actually set those things up, the, the cost of me actually running the company is effectively zero. In the same way, the cost of villas is going to zero through the metaverse. The cost of interaction is going to zero through the metaverse. The cost of energy is about to go to zero because we are about to come up with clean energy production methods. And within the next 50 years, the world's going to transition to methods where the energy production goes to zero effectively. So electricity will cost zero. It's, a lot of these things seem like completely far-fetched, insane ideas, but actually this is how technology works. And the next stage of this world is being built through the metaverse. So, you know, I have 10 minutes left. So I've talked about kind of the old world and the transition from the old world to the new world. So here's some actual actionable things that you can do to get prepared or just start getting yourself transitioned into this new world. First of all, I'll give a, a word of warning. If you do not transition to this new world, it will be built, built without you. And you will be left in an old world. If you want to build businesses in the old world, like try opening a restaurant right now, try opening a business right now, try competing with these, these, these conglomerates in this real world, it's over. You know, if we used to think like real estate and land and all of these things were absolutely fantastic assets, which they still are, they still are. But for us to keep thinking in this old paradigm of producing goods and services and generating wealth that, that we will accrue more and more of so I myself can get rich, that old world thinking is done. You need to think in the new world of the digital. Everything is going digital. So if you, need, if you don't transition yourself, your wealth will be left behind. As a matter of fact, every single currency in the world, every single fiat currency ever in the world has gone to zero without fail. We have one now called the US dollar, which is being inflated at 25% a year, 40% in the last two years. And I think it's 60 something percent since 2008. And that, that inflation curve continues. Every single currency in the world, the fiat currency before, the reserve currencies included, have always inflated to infinity. And in order for, for this old paradigm to go out with a bang, they will keep inflating those dollars away. So no matter how many dollars, how much, how, no matter how much wealth you keep in this old system, it won't be enough because they'll eventually be printing enough so you can't keep up with the inflation rate. It's the hyperinflationary environment that we're going to experience over the next 10 to 15 years. If you now transition your wealth from the old system to the new system, which is what we're doing with crypto and all these digital assets, yes, you're going to experience an enormous amount of volatility. Like I'm of the opinion that we're about to go through a pretty solid crypto crash as we speak. And then we'll have a massive growth. And then sometime in 2022, there will be an enormous bear market. Yes, that is going to happen. But over the long term, what you're doing is you're transitioning your wealth from a completely collapsing system, the old Bretton Woods dollar-based physical world, to a new system that is digital for the metaverse built for the next 100 years. Okay, so transition your wealth into this new system, which... I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm preaching to the, to the choir here. So I don't, I don't have to tell you guys too much about getting into digital assets. But the other thing is transition your revenue streams into this new system. You know, if you are somebody who is, is mostly focused on, on, you know, generating revenue and adding value to the world in this physical world, start to think about how you can start to transition your, your value generation to the new digital world. First of all, it's a completely nascent space. So you getting in on the ground floor allows you to be ahead of the curve and create generational wealth over the long term. But more importantly, you are now hooking into the new world where you're able to operate within the new world. So like a few examples that, that, that I have right now is, you know, one is obviously investing in crypto. That's a no brainer, but obviously protect yourself from the crashes because crypto has these times where you lose a lot of money in crypto as well, to be honest. Um, having digital revenue streams, Okay, so like the, right now, a great one is uh, things like having scholarships within Axie. You can have, there, there's literally play to earn games that are being set up that if you become an investor into, you can actually help people hook themselves up to digital economies and earn living in digital economies. You could become a developer in the metaverse. You could, you could do a million different things that would allow you to start participating in the new digital world compared to the old kind of paradigm of building buildings and you know, providing goods and providing services. Finally, transition your skill sets. If you are somebody who's hearing, listening to me right now, and you feel like, oh my God, this new world that's being built, um, I'm, I, it's kind of confusing, it's weird, start learning about it right now. 
you know, we still have four to 10 years for this thing to go to full, full fruition. Start participating in it, start learning in it. If you're here, you're already looking towards this direction. You know, the, 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 the unit platform is an amazing place to be able to learn about this stuff. That's why I, I love being here and participating in it. But just start to transition your thinking towards that world. Most of us are hanging on to it, the old way of doing things. And all we want is things to go back to how they were. Things never go back to how they were. Read that fourth turning book. It'll explain to you how every 100 years, a new way is built. You either get with the new way or the old way gets swiped away. And you are the casualty that, get, that happens in the middle. You know, I, sometimes I, I, you know, these things sound nihilistic, but actually it's the forest fires that build the forest. And we are right now going through a forest fire, but there's a completely new forest that's going to be built. That's going to be much more equanimous, much more equal, much more functional. It'll actually give a lot of, give a lot of ability for people who've been left behind, who were not able to participate in this old paradigm of, you know, generating wealth in certain countries to a place where everybody will have somewhat of an equal uh, landscape to be able to participate in. So that's the metaverse. I bet you were not expecting this to go like this. I bet you, I was just going to talk about some basic metaverse stuff. So if you want to learn more, we, we always do talks about this stuff um, every Wednesday from 11 to one. And otherwise I'll see you guys here again. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sam. Um, uh, amazing uh, presentation and uh, such a such a great uh, insight into the metaverse. And um, um, we actually have a few more minutes to for the audience to ask a few questions. And um, yeah, please, please guys, um, feel free to ask uh, questions to Sam. And uh, I have a question. So right now, a lot of uh, podcasters and uh, crypto influencers are referring to the the such a great movie ready player one and uh, one of the problems and challenges that are being addressed is how can we make sure that the metaverse will be, actually become a commodity like internet and um, actually what is commodity that it's owned by the society owned by users and not like versus owned by the corporations and um, uh, and companies like um, meta Facebook. What are your thoughts on that? Thank you. That's a that's a great point. I have two two kind of ways of thinking about it. One, yes, there will be completely controlled metaverses that we that will be built by entities that take on the cost of doing it, and they like they will have their own rules and build it their own way. Great thing about the metaverse is it's not going to be one metaverse. You know, you will have the option to exist in worlds which comply or agree with your your way of doing things. So. You know, while they're busy building their metaverse, there'll be other people who'll be building their own metaverse. Like, for example, the guy who invented the internet is inventing a new internet that can't be stopped, can't be controlled, can't be completely blocked, right? So there, there, there are great people around the world working on building spaces and, and universes effectively that won't be under the control of the people who, who you know, we're kind of worried about. So it, it's up to us. It's up to us to, 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 uh, to devote, because the most valuable thing that we have in the world is actually our time, attention, and energy. It's for us to devote our time, attention, and energy to places and metaverses that we feel to be valuable and support those. If we're spending that in Facebook, then guess who's gonna be controlling everything? They are. If we are supporting platforms and places and, 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 and systems which are you know, following a more free, more equanimous way of doing things, then, then that's what's going to grow. So if you think about it, decentralization lends itself to power being given back to the people. It's the people who will now decide where we put our time, effort, and energy, and what value we add into the system, which can then be given back to the people, right? So yeah, they're going to do their thing. We're going to do our thing. And then uh, I'll see you guys in the, in the good metaverse. Awesome, great, great uh, answer. And um, um, I'll, I'll say we have a few more minutes for a few more questions. And uh, since we are based here in Bali and um, um, have such an amazing community here of uh, crypto entrepreneurs and uh, investors, creators, um, what is your opinion on, on the local market here for the metaverse and, uh, and the digital assets and how can we expedite the, the growth of, of the uh, crypto and blockchain here in general, locally. Thank you. I, I definitely think you, the, like we just discussed, the people will make everything and make the metaverse and the community we have here 
that, you know, Bali does something to you. It, it makes you spiritual if you want to be or not, right? It enters your soul and shows you your human and God nature. So I feel like the people here are awake to that possibility and actually work really hard to make sure that we're, we're you know, building a, a different world. So the, every person that I've seen out here who is actually working really hard towards that kind of goal, I feel like we're, we're building different pieces of it. You know, my, what I do is I actually help people get onboarded into this new world with this kind of worldview that I've presented to you. You know, unit, they're building out the, the framework for people to be able to easily build their own projects and, and get, get into this new value generation mechanism. We're all building different pieces. Over time, these things will come together to, to, to kind of become synergistic. And Bali will definitely be one of the hubs of crypto, one of the hubs of digital assets. It will remain the single most wanted place in the world to travel. Uh, and then we will hopefully also build uh, a digital version of Bali where we will build you know, a great world that people want to come to. Joe, what's up? Hey, Sim. Um, yeah, so it's, it's a really cool and uh, uh, I don't know, just like a, like a binoculars into the future, which I don't, you know, I, I'm kind of, I'm getting my mind around the metaverse thing. And I, and I just want, there's a lot of the questions I have, I guess, but the one thing that uh, comes to mind first is, or most, most uh, prominently, is um, talking about moving your wealth to the metaverse. How, how is it that we exist, uh, we, we don't need a house or we don't need a villa in the metaverse? How does that how does that work in your mind? So it's not that we don't need it. It's that many people will be forced to live in a reality where their lives will exist more in the metaverse than in the real world, right? Me personally, us, we're working really hard to make sure that we're not forced, forced into a corner where we have to stay, you know, live off of central bank digital currencies that are gifted to us by, by countries and we have no ability to be able to get other things. You know, we will always want to be able to at least have a good physical life and, you know, have some place that, that we can call home. But the reality of what the way that the powers that be are moving, like the World Economic Forum, when you actually read their agendas, read what their plan is, they have a plan that by 2030, people will not need to own things. They will simply be given, they will be given spaces to, to sleep in. They will be given, you know, cars will be, will be shared. Um, seamlessly and driven automatically to different places their plan is to actually share the entire world and in that process many people will actually be marginalized to a place where they can simply only afford to physically exist in some you know government mandated small little place but they will their lives will be completely based around the metaverse and and existent in the metaverse their lives will be more in the digital than they will be in the physical you me i'm not i'm not planning on living off of central bank digital currencies I'm furiously exiting the old system and generating as much of my wealth, the revenue streams, everything in the digital system in a way that they cannot come and take from me. And I will fight to the death to make sure people have that ability in their, in going forward. What I think is the sad reality is many people will simply not have the opportunity to exit that old system and they'll be forced into a corner, kind of like what's happened now. Many people are forced to stay at home and stay within their four walls and, and figure out a way to do their work and jobs from home. As the, the, the inflation of the money supply goes and that wealth is stolen from those people, they will become more and more marginalized towards a, a future where the ownership of homes and things will simply become, like the millennial generation, we haven't been able to buy a home for a long period of time. It's already happened. Now just extrapolate that forward 10 years and the idea of ownership itself is about to be completely revolutionized and taken away. So, you know, probably our kids' generation will be, one that will completely balk at the idea of ownership. Thank you, Sam. Um, actually, uh, we are a little bit out of the time. Um, so I would like to thank you, Sam, for such a, a great and inspiring presentation about the uh, metaverse and digital assets. Uh, thank you so much, Sam.